Hi, good morning. Welcome to the Houston Zoo. We're coming live to you today from in front of our Jurassic Giants exhibit. My name is Wendy. I'm the director of event operations here at the zoo. And I have with me Sarah and Daniel with our conservation departments. And Sarah is here with a very handsome guy that she's going to tell us a little about today. He is. He is the most handsome guy, if you ask me, in the entire zoo. Everyone, this is Denver, the blue and gold macaw, and he is such a special, special friend. Now, I know you guys probably know parrots as being very, very intelligent, and yes, Denver is one of the smartest birds I know, um, but because of that, he can be a little bit mischievous. Denver, do you listen? Good. That's right, he could be a little bit mischievous. Some people say that macaws are like a three-year-old with a can opener on their face. So can you imagine anyone with toddlers in their lives? Imagine living with a toddler for six years that has a beak that can act like, almost like a can opener. His beak is super duper strong and he needs that beak to hang from cliffs and eat things like this, like nuts. This is one of his favorite treats. And I want you to see how quickly he breaks open that nut and eats all the meat inside. Denver has a digit in his tongue. Think of it like a little bone in his tongue that he's able to use to manipulate all the yummy stuff inside of that nut. He's amazing, such a cool guy. Now, a lot of you might know this, I think this is fascinating, that birds are the descendants of dinosaurs. And my friend Daniel happens to be the coolest dino nerd I know, and he's gonna tell us how birds are like dinosaurs. You ready, Daniel? Thank you so much, Sarah. My name is Daniel again. I work for the Wildlife Conservation Department. But like she said, I am a dino nerd. I was obsessed with dinosaurs ever since I was a kid. And seeing Denver right here, to me, is evidence of how amazing nature is and how dinosaurs, even if we don't see them anymore, are still alive with us today. So if we look at Denver, we can see that, you know, he has really sharp claws. And if you guys go inside the exhibit at one point to see uh, the dinosaurs, you guys are going to find your Velociraptors, your T-Rex, um, your uh, Dilophosaurus, for example, a lot of these dinosaurs are bipedal. So if it's a bipedal dinosaur like a T-Rex, for example, it is most likely related to Denver because these guys are called theropods. Theropods are usually bipedal. They have three claws on the feet. Uh, they have hollow bones. And these are all things that happens with um, modern day birds as well. Uh, another fun fact about dinosaurs is that they also had feathers, or at least a majority of them. And if you guys look at uh, beautiful Denver, he has a variety of colors that he uses for camouflage in the wild, to attract mates, or even sometimes to uh, warn others to not, not get close to him. And we know a lot about dinosaur behavior because we can look at modern day birds and understand uh, what they probably did back in the day, which is pretty cool. Uh, if you guys look at his feet, uh, again, like I said, they're really sharp. They have something called zygodactyl feet, which means two of them are at the front and two of them are on the back. So this is amazing for perching. And again, like I said, he's pretty much bipedal. He doesn't use his front legs per se <laughs> to do anything but flying. So that is an ad adaptation for birds because they adapted to fly. Now, dinosaurs, on the other hand, were primarily terrestrial. So once you guys come and check out the exhibit, you guys are gonna see the huge variety of dinosaurs that used to live in the US, in uh, Africa, and in Asia as well. And you guys are gonna be able to see uh, the relatives of Denver as well. And Wendy, do you think we can go and get a peek of the exhibit? Yeah, I think that's a great idea, Daniel. Yeah. Thank you, Denver. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Let's go into the exhibit and give y'all a little peek of some of the dinosaurs that we have here in the Jurassic Giants exhibit at the Houston Zoo. So we're about to come up here on the left to our tallest dinosaur in the exhibit, the Brachiosaurus, but this is not the largest dinosaur that we have here in the exhibit. Actually, the, the largest dinosaur that we have is 85 feet long. So definitely come and check it out animals and if you guys thought about giraffes when I said that I can tell you 100% that is correct so the long neck is an adaptation to reach plants high up in the trees and brachiosaurus which were part of your sauropods specialized on eating leaves from trees 
And like you said, there's so many other species that we can find in the fossil record that indicate that these guys were primarily uh, tree feeders, pretty much. And we also have um, smaller versions of them. You know, if you guys think about your ostriches, your flamingos, your whooping cranes, they also have really long necks, but they also specialized on eating stuff on the ground. So it, it is not always an indicator to... Uh, tree feeding behavior right so brachiosaurus was an amazing animal for these conditions awesome thank you daniel why don't we move a little bit further along and take a look at one of those dinosaurs that you mentioned earlier is pretty closely related to birds daniel this guy over here to our right I used to think that this was a stegosaurus. This isn't a stegosaurus. Tell me a little bit about this particular one. Absolutely. So this is called Tuajangosaurus. So these guys were actually found in parts of Asia. And yes, it is technically related to the stegosaurus. It is within the same family because it has the plates and the spikes on the tail. Uh, but again, it was smaller. Stegosaurus was actually your largest species of stegosaurus uh, back in the Jurassic era. And these guys specialize in eating plants, pretty much like your modern their herbivores. They used to eat on coniferous leaves and just normal vegetation and shrubs because of the size. We can tell that this was a natural behavior for them. And as you guys can see, it was armored with plates and uh, spikes on the side. So this guy was not to mess around with, you know. That's awesome. Let's go a little bit further before it's time for us to head out for the day. And take a look at this guy over here. This is the one that I was mentioning is more closely rela related to Denver, right? So tell me a little bit about that, Daniel. Yes, so I mentioned earlier that theropods are your closest relatives to modern day birds. And like I mentioned, this guy right here is a herosaurus. These guys used to live in the Triassic period. And as you guys can see, this was these were uh, prehistoric reptiles that used to be bipedal and had three legs on their feet. And eventually these arms right here evolved to become wings and their necks pretty much become a little more slender. The teeth disappeared, the tails got reduced and they develop feathers. And these are actually animals that you guys will see here at, uh, at our new exhibit because this is just an, an early representation of dinosaurs. If you guys come check the exhibit, you guys are gonna see feathered dinosaurs, larger theropods like your T-Rex, like your Spinosaurus. So it is a really cool thing to see how birds have evolved from like humongous reptiles to what we see today and they're so beautiful and a lot of these animals uh, are found here in Texas they're found in many parts of the world and dinosaurs were all over the world as well so please come check out the exhibit and Wendy's gonna give you more details about it thank you so much Daniel and thank you all for joining us today be sure to come and check out the exhibit it is open through September 2nd like I said we have over 60 dinosaurs in this exhibit we're super excited about it make sure that when you're here you grab some merch uh, we got some great merch available also at the exit of the exhibit and inside our main gift shop as well. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Have a good one.